Oh, that Gendry's one. Oh, that was nice. disgusting. Oh, God. What's going on everyone, Mango here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on one of the most difficult heroes in Overwatch, Sigma. While Sigma is one of the hardest characters in the game to learn, once mastered, he can hold the front line single-handedly longer than any other tank in the game, while at the same time putting out more damage than anyone else on the team. This guide is going to teach you how to master his defensive abilities to hold down the front line as long as possible, while also leveraging your offensive abilities to put out maximum damage. We will start by going over his shield and kinetic grasp, since these are the fundamentals you need to learn first before talking about his primary attack and accretion. I'll wrap up by going over his ultimate and general strategy, and we'll put a link in the description to each section if you want to skip ahead. With that out of the way, let's get started. First things first, we're going to talk about Sigma's defensive abilities, because you need to get this down first before thinking about any other part of Sigma's kit. Let's start with his shield. Sigma's shield, formerly called the Experimental Barrier, recently underwent a nerf, dropping it to 700 total health and reducing its recharge rate. It now regenerates 80 health per second after being down for 2 seconds. Once activated, the barrier moves forward by holding down the ability key and stops once it is released. You can then recall it by pressing the ability key once more, putting it on a 1 second cooldown before it can be cast again. However, if the barrier is destroyed, it is put on a 5 second cooldown before it can be cast again. For this reason, it is important to never let your shield become fully destroyed if you can help it. You can keep your barrier from being destroyed by doing what I call shield flashing. In short, shield flashing means not leaving your barrier up for more than a few seconds, but let's unpack this term a bit by comparing it to Reinhardt and Orisa's shield. You can think of Sigma's shield as the most nimble of the three, since it has the lowest overall health but offers the most flexibility by being able to be sent out and recalled. So while Ryan and Orisa may put their shield out to soak up as much damage as possible, you need to leverage the agility of Sigma's shield to get maximum value out of its low health. This is where shield flashing comes in. Shield flashing means casting out your shield to block impactful abilities like Roadhog's hook or Anna's anti-grenade, while recalling it frequently to avoid it taking harmless spam damage that is easily healed up by your team. This usually takes shape by Sigma almost constantly throwing out and retrieving his shield. Once again, don't treat Sigma's shield like Reinhardt and Orisa's shield, where you just put it out there and let it soak up damage. The most important thing to remember about Sigma's shield is that you should use it to block key abilities while reducing the amount of spam damage it takes. I usually try to do this by focusing on the enemies that have these abilities and anticipating when they're going to use them. The most common example of this is blocking a Roadhog hook. It's usually pretty obvious when an enemy hog is looking for a hook. It's on a fairly short cooldown, and when it comes off, Hogs usually posture pretty aggressively and you can tell they're sizing your team up for a hook opportunity. I'll bait the Hog into throwing his hook by leaving my shield down until he's locked in on me, then throwing it up at the last second to block the hook. This timing will take practice since this all happens extremely quickly and you'll want to be putting your shield up at nearly the same time Roadhog throws his hook. Here's a quick list of some of the main heroes and abilities you should look to block with your shield. Anna's Biotic Grenade and Sleep Dart, Ash's Dynamite, Echo's Sticky Bombs, McCree's Flashbang, Roadhog's Hook, Sigma's Accretion, and Soldier's Helix Rocket. The first step to learning shield flashing, especially if you're just picking up Sigma for the first time, is to practice taking your shield down any time it's not taking damage. It's very easy to forget that you have your shield up somewhere as the battle ebbs and flows, or as you're repositioning. You want to make sure you're dropping your shield in these instances so it can start recharging its health and be ready for your next engagement. This also prevents opponents from doing needless damage to it if you're not using it anymore. If I'm playing against a Sigma, I always look to damage his shield if he forgets that he left it up somewhere. Shield flashing makes up about 90% of my shield usage on Sigma, but there's one more key strategy you'll want to look for. Shutting down off-angle snipers and damage dealers. This one's pretty simple. If you see an enemy like Widowmaker, Hanzo, or Ash off in the distance or on high ground, Send your shield straight out into their face to force them to reposition. This can be incredibly frustrating to deal with for the enemy damage dealer and will negate some of the value they bring to their team. Just make sure to recall it once the enemy repositions and throw it back out there when they pop their head back out. Use natural cover and you and your other team's defensive abilities to hold the front line while your shield is out disrupting snipers. On the flip side of that coin, in niche situations, you can also use your shield to give a sniper on your team a personal barrier early in a teamfight. 
I'll oftentimes do this while defending Volskaya point B when someone on my team will position on top of the elevator to put pressure on the enemy team coming out of spawn. Throwing your shield up top with them can prevent them from falling to an unlucky headshot and allow them to apply pressure to the enemy team longer than they could have without the barrier. One more small note about the barrier before we move on, you can send barriers through obstacles and doorways as long as the center of the barrier is free of the obstacle, so just make sure your reticle is clear of any walls if you're trying to squeeze your shield into a tight spot. Okay, now that we've got the shield out of the way, let's talk Kinetic Grasp. Kinetic Grasp functions very similarly to D.Va's Defense Matrix in the way it absorbs bullets and projectiles. In fact, it can absorb anything D.Va can absorb and is disrupted by anything that disrupts Defense Matrix. The key difference is Grasp only lasts 2 seconds, cannot be cancelled, and only has a range of 3 meters compared to 10 meters for Defense Matrix. Finally, Kinetic Grasp converts 60% of the damage it absorbs into temporary shields for up to a total of 400 HP, so you'll want to try to absorb as much damage with it as possible. Grasp has a long cooldown at 12 seconds, so you'll want to be careful not to use it unless you are sure to sustain a lot of damage or desperately need it. The hitbox for Grasp is pretty small and quirky and will absorb anything that hits it from the front or sides and projects in roughly a 90 degree cone in front of Sigma. Note, you can still be damaged from behind or from the sides while Kinetic Grasp is up, so be sure to face whatever source of damage you are trying to absorb. While Grasp can absorb many attacks and abilities, it can be disrupted by Roadhog's Hook, Sigma's Accretion, Sombra's Hack, Reinhardt's Pin, or Doomfist's Rocket Punch, cancelling any temporary shields you may have gained. Additionally, beam attacks from Zarya, Winston, Symmetra, Mei, or Moira can damage you through it, and you will be vulnerable to crowd control abilities like Lucio's Boop as well as physical attacks like a standard melee or Reinhardt's Axe Swing. While Grasp is a great defensive ability for any ranged projectiles and bullets, you want to be sure there are no enemies nearby that may look to capitalize on its usage, as you are unable to do anything else for the ability's 2 second duration. Okay, let's talk about how to use Kinetic Grasp. The most common way you'll be using Kinetic Grasp is to buy time on the front line, tanking for your team when your shield is low and needs to recharge. Hopefully you've been shield flashing effectively and have already bought time for your team to get a pick. But if your shield resources are low, activate Grasp, get in front of your team, and try to absorb as much damage as possible. Depending on how much shield you generate from the Grasp, you will be able to stay at the front and face tank with the temporary shields that you've gained while you wait for your barrier to regenerate. If you don't manage to gain many shields, make sure to retreat behind cover, and at the very least you've provided your team with 2 more seconds of safety. Getting into a rhythm with your shield and kinetic grasp can make it really hard for the enemy to push into you because they will struggle to get any meaningful damage past you if you're doing your job well. The other major use of kinetic grasp will be to shut down ultimates. These are the kind of plays that will single-handedly win the game for your team, so you're going to want to get good at this. There are a couple ways to accomplish this. The first way would be to gobble up an ultimate before it even activates, meaning you can eat ultimates like Graviton Surge, Blizzard, and Pulse Bomb before they ever get to deploy. This can be hard to do for Sigma since the hitbox on Kinetic Grasp is small and its duration is short, but if you see an enemy Zarya, Mei, or Tracer aggressively push into your team and you think they have their ult, get in front of them and activate Kinetic Grasp, and if you're lucky, the enemy will chuck their ult right into you. You can also use Grasp to deny a number of other enemy damage alts, such as Tactical Visor, High Noon, Whole Hog, or Death Blossom. The strategy here is simple. Once you hear one of the enemy's alt lines, get as close as you can to them and activate Kinetic Grasp. The closer you are to alting enemies like Soldier and McCree, the more you obscure their sight lines with your Grasp, and if you're in the right position when a Reaper ults, you'll be able to suck up most of his ultimate within your Grasp. What you'll really be looking for here is their positioning. Keep an eye out if you see a McCree going on an unusual flank, or if you see a Reaper teleport behind your team, or, in lower ranks, wraithing directly into the center of it. This is a dead giveaway that they want to use their ult, so you should save Kinetic Grasp for when they pull the trigger. The final way you can utilize Kinetic Grasp is to peel for your backline. While it is generally not the main tank's priority to peel for the backline, Sigma can function as either main tank or off tank depending on his team comp, and at either rate, Peeling is a great use of Kinetic Grasp, so let's talk about it. For those that don't know, peeling simply means turning around and providing support to your backline when they are taking damage, usually a healer that's under duress from a flanking enemy. 
In this example, let's say your Zenyatta has been jumped on by an enemy Tracer or Reaper. You should turn around and activate Kinetic Grasp to keep your Zenyatta safe, while also giving him time to heal and pressure the flanking enemy, hopefully confirming an elimination or at least forcing them to retreat. When you combine Shield Flashing with proper management of Kinetic Grasp, you can create more defensive output than any other tank in the game. Make sure to save your shield for blocking major abilities and not spam damage. The first step to learning this technique is to practice recalling your shield anytime it's not in use. Use Kinetic Grasp to fill in moments when your shield health is low to give it time to regenerate. Additionally, hold on to Grasp to disrupt enemy ultimates that may be coming your way, and don't forget to use it to peel for your team. When you get the defensive fundamentals of Sigma down, you become an immovable wall and provide your team with a ton of time, space, and opportunities to make plays, and should be the first thing you practice as you master Sigma. Okay, now that we have the defensive fundamentals out of the way, we get to talk about the fun stuff. Damage. Let's start with Sigma's primary attack, the Hyperspheres. When you press the primary attack button, Sigma throws out two small spheres, which travel 22 meters before exploding in a 3 meter radius, dealing 55 direct damage and up to 30 splash damage each, for a maximum of 110 damage per volley if each sphere connects directly, and 60 damage per volley if damaging indirectly. The hyperspheres do not have a headshot multiplier, so just aim for center mass with these. You also don't need to reload these weapons, so feel free to let them fly. They can also cause a very, very small amount of self damage, but it's not something you really need to worry about because it doesn't happen often, and if you manage to kill yourself with the hyperspheres, you were probably so low health, you were about to die anyways. Now, the number one thing I want to talk about with hyperspheres is controlling your engagement distance. Your primary attack is most effective at its max range of 22 meters, where it detonates in a 3 meter radius. Not only does the detonation radius make it easier to output damage more consistently, but the hyperspheres converge toward your reticle as they near that 22 meter mark, making them more accurate. So, what do I mean when I say control your engagement distance? This means controlling space so that you are fighting at the distance that is best for you, in this case, 22 meters. I'd recommend going into the practice range with Sigma and getting familiar with this distance, as this is the distance you want to be engaging at in the real game. Once you get enemies in this range, you'll want to mirror their movement. So if they move 5 meters closer to you, you'll want to move 5 meters back. If they move 5 meters away from you, move 5 meters closer. This is what controlling engagement distance means, keeping your enemies in that 22 meter sweet spot as you're both moving around the battlefield. If you do this properly, you'll find yourself ending up with more damage and more eliminations than you did when you were just aiming willy-nilly. Sigma's hyperspheres also bounce off walls and surfaces, so look to use them on enemies that are hiding around corners. For example, if a low health enemy escapes around a corner into a hallway or room, throw your hyperspheres through the door and off the wall and try to bounce them into the enemy to confirm a kill. You can also use this strategy to get poke damage through early in a fight if enemies are hiding around corners. Finally. The implosion from hyperspheres slightly pulls your enemies towards the center, which really doesn't affect things that much, but can make it easier to hit follow-up shots. Another reason to control your engagement distance. Okay, let's talk about accretion. You know, that big rock that Sigma throws? It deals 70 direct damage and up to 40 splash damage, and like hyperspheres, can also cause a minimal amount of self damage. Accretion is a large, arcing, slow-moving projectile that takes 0.65 seconds to cast, making it difficult to hit at long ranges. Since it has a long cooldown at 10 seconds, you'll want to try to land as many rocks as you can in order to get value out of it. That isn't to say you should never go for a long-range rock, but you'll hit close-range opponents more consistently with it. In fact, this is exactly how I would recommend using Accretion a lot of the time. Pressuring enemies that have broken your engagement distance and are now too close to consistently hit with your hyperspheres. For example, if a reaper walks up to you and you're unable to hit him with your hyperspheres, slap him in the face with this big f***ing rock and watch him wraith away like a little bitch. Seriously though, we should talk about Sigma's main combo here. Basically, the combo goes accretion, hyperspheres, melee. If you land all your abilities, you'll be able to take out 200 HP heroes before they know what happened. When you hit an enemy with accretion, quickly look to land both of your hyperspheres because they will be knocked down for 0.8 seconds, then follow up with a melee. You want to do this as fast as possible because like Roadhog's hook combo, enemies will get a small window to use abilities and disrupt you once the stun from accretion wears off, 
so you'll want to try to beat them to the punch. Side note, if you get into a close range battle with an enemy and don't have accretion available, make sure to weave in melees between your hypersphere shots to both maximize your DPS and make up for the inconsistency of hyperspheres in close range. Okay, there's a few more important things to know about accretion before we move on. Number one is that it has a 4 meter knockback, so look to use it if enemies are playing by the edge of the map so you can knock them off and get a free kill. Second is that it ignores Genji's Deflect, D.Va's Defense Matrix, and Sigma's Kinetic Grasp, so always look to use it to disrupt these enemies' abilities. Lastly, Accretion is another tool Sigma has that can deny alts, as it will knock many enemies out of their alt once activated. This usually works better if you're prepared and see the alt coming, since Accretion has a small amount of cast time, while Kinetic Grasp is better if you need to quickly react to an enemy alt. Okay, let's review Sigma's offensive abilities. The most important thing when it comes to hyperspheres is controlling your engagement distance of 22 meters, which will allow you to get the most damage in eliminations. Use accretion to pressure enemies that have gotten too close to you, making use of his combo to quickly dispatch 200 HP heroes. Don't forget that accretion disrupts powerful enemy defensive abilities and ultimates, and look to do this as often as possible. If you get these fundamentals down, you can easily find yourself racking up the most damage in eliminations on your team. Let's talk about the last piece of Sigma's kit, his ultimate, Gravitic Flux. There's a lot of moving pieces to this ultimate, so I want to make sure everyone is comfortable with the damage numbers and understands their significance. When Sigma activates his ult, he takes flight, and a 7.5 meter radius circle is highlighted on the ground. Sigma can move this target around, and once triggered, all enemies within the circle are lifted up, held for 2 seconds, then slammed back down into the ground, dealing damage. Let's unpack the numbers here. Damage is dealt in two stages during this ult, when enemies are lifted into the air, and when they are slammed back into the ground. When lifted into the air, a uniform 50 damage is dealt to every enemy. However, the slam deals 50% of each enemy's max HP. So, while the slam would deal 100 damage to Soldier 76, it would deal 250 damage to Reinhardt, who has 500 total health. Effectively, this means that Sigma's ult is more impactful to low HP heroes than it is to high HP heroes. For example, this ultimate would leave Tracer with a measly 25 HP, while Reinhardt would come out of it with 200 HP. There's not really a bad time to use Gravitic Flux. You can use it to start an engagement to put the enemy on their back foot, as teams are generally pretty grouped up at the beginning of the fight. However, it might be more effective to activate it later on in the fight once the enemy team has used their cooldowns. For example, Reaper, Moira, Orisa, and Mei all have abilities that will allow them to escape your ult, so it would be better to catch those enemies without their abilities. As long as we're talking about enemy abilities, let's talk about some that can disrupt your ult. While Sigma is floating, he's vulnerable to getting stunned by enemy abilities, which will cancel any damage that has yet to be done during his ult. For this reason, it's important to track enemies that may be able to disrupt your ult, so you don't put yourself in a position to get it disrupted. The main culprits to look out for here are Roadhog's Hooks, Sombra's Hacks, Anna's Sleep Darts, Sigma's Accretions, and McCree's Flashbangs. If these enemies are present, you're going to want to stay out of their range and quickly get behind cover after lifting them in the air in order to avoid their abilities disrupting your ult. Another important thing to consider with this ult is that you can use Hyperspheres while enemies are suspended in the air. As we discussed earlier, lower HP heroes are hit harder by this ult, so that's why I like to target here. Since a 200 HP hero would be left with 50 HP after your ult, you would only need to hit them with one hypersphere in order to confirm a kill on them from the slam. I usually target healers here since they are high value targets and pose less of a threat to me if I get close to confirm a kill on them. They can be hard to hit in the air since they still move around a little bit, but you can follow up once they hit the ground where it's usually a little easier to finish them off. Let's talk ult combos. Like Graviton Surge, Gravitic Flux is a great ultimate to combine with other alts due to its ability to stun multiple enemies at the same time. This makes it great to combo with a number of offensive alts. Look to leverage the 2 seconds people are held in the air with ultimates like McCree's Deadeye or Soldier's Tactical Visor, which gain more value when enemies are unable to hide behind cover. You can also look to combine it with a variety of other damage alts that can clean up kills after the slam, such as Reaper's Death Blossom, Genji's Blade, Junkrat's Tire, or even Moira's Coalescence. Pretty much any ult that deals damage will be set up well by Gravitic Flux. One other thing to note about ult combos, since the enemy can see the targeting circle on the ground, 
they will do everything they can to avoid being caught in it, making it hard to get anyone with your ult sometimes. For this reason, you can look to combo Gravitic Flux on top of another crowd control ult like Zarya's Graviton Surge, Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, or Maze Blizzard in order to guarantee more enemies getting caught in your Flux. There's one more great use of Gravitic Flux I want to talk about because it's one of my favorite things to do with Sigma. Basically, once Overtime hits, you can look to use Gravitic Flux to pull all enemies off the objective. If overtime has been going on for roughly 5 or more seconds, the enemies will be suspended in air long enough for the overtime timer to run down, ending the round. This tip is most applicable on payload maps since they have the smallest objective, but can be pulled off on any objective map. One huge thing to note here, if you aim directly at the payload, the targeting circle will not appear and you won't be able to trigger your ult, so you'll need to aim right around the payload. That brings us to the last section of our video, strategy. I first want to talk about how you should think about team compositions when you pick Sigma. The traditional use of Sigma at higher levels is in a double shield and poke team comp, where he is usually paired with Orisa, ranged damage dealers, and a Baptiste. This leverages Sigma's range damage and time buying ability on the front line to wear down enemy defenses over time with overwhelming spam damage. In this vein, you can look to pair Sigma with low mobility ranged heroes like McCree, Ash, Hanzo, Junkrat, Bastion, Torbjorn, Anna, Baptiste, and Zenyatta. All of these heroes will benefit from sitting in the back line while you soak up damage in front of them, looking to capitalize on any spam damage that makes it through the enemy front line. While Sigma's traditional tank pairing is Orisa, he really pairs well with just about any tank in the game since his kit is flexible enough to act as a main tank or an off tank. The only time Sigma's really going to feel out of place is if your team picks a hyper mobile comp where the other tank picks Winston, Ball, or D.Va, and your DPS goes Tracer, Genji, Doomfist, Echo, Farah, or Sombra. At this point, with so few teammates behind your shield and defensive abilities, Sigma starts to lose value, and you're probably better off playing a tank that can keep up with your team's fast tempo. Let's talk about positioning, even though I touched on it a bit earlier in the video. Most of the time, you'll want to be positioned on your team's frontline in order to keep squishier teammates safe behind your shield and kinetic grasp. Remember to utilize shield flashing and natural cover to maximize the amount of time and space you can occupy while using kinetic grasp to fill in gaps when your shield is down and you need cover. If you're paired with another shield tank like Reinhardt or Orisa, it will give you the ability to take short off angles to try and get more damage in on the enemy. Communication is key here as your frontline will need to play more conservatively in your absence. You should also look to pair with a DPS on this off angle so they can benefit from your shield. Well. That's all I have for you today. If you made it this far and enjoy the content and hopefully learn something new, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep making videos like this. Don't forget to check out the other hero guides on my channel and be sure to swing by my stream and say hi. You can find me on Twitch at The Real Mango Slice. If you have any questions or think I missed anything, be sure to drop a comment below. I respond to almost all my comments. Until next time, good luck and have fun. Oh, that Kendrick's one. Oh, that was disgusting. No. Oh, who shot him? Oh. Someone shot, deflected a shot into me. No, you don't. Suck it, dick. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh. That's on him. Oh, we can do this. Mercy. We can do this. We can do this. Who's on it? Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. Tracer. Tracer low. Oh, 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 my God. I can't believe we did that. Oh.